like what really bothers me about a lot of these plays when Huntley's ready to throw a lot of times people are not there's no one there to receive like right now he's ready to throw the only throw he might have is this 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 throw up here to Deshaun Jackson but I don't think he's too confident in it because of how close the DB is but nobody else is ready to receive the ball his route's going his route's going even the check down hadn't even come out and started to develop yet he's ready to get rid of it which is fine that he's ready to get rid of it, but he needs multiple options if he's if it's his true quick game. Because I'm, I'm assuming this was the very first read, because that's where he looked the whole time. But again, that's taken away, or he's not comfortable with it. Nobody else still is ready to accept or receive the ball. Now it's check down ready to receive. These two guys still, you know, running their route. Again, you know, the pressure gets there, but, you know, and he gets it out. But that's what I'm going to look at in most of this film. When he's ready to throw, is anybody even ready to receive the ball? we got to find a flaw, the, where the flaw is somewhere and why he can only complete, you know, 12 to 0 to 12 yard passes. Another thing I noticed while, you know, finally getting to watch the All-22 and like, you know, just a setting where I can kind of focus is, a, you know, in a press conference, Harbaugh was talking about people need to run the right routes and catch the ball, don't fumble the ball. I I think a lot of this stuff is directed at D-Rock. Just look at him at the top of your screen on this play. And I, and I put this play out earlier on, um, I don't know if it was TikTok or YouTube shorts, but normally when you get this little this little tight end hideaway where he's going to block, 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 and creep back out this other side. You normally have something going that way so, you, you know, the court, the tight end can have this cleared out. Well, just, just watch this character right here. He don't know what the freak is going on. He's just looking back. And see, what normally happens is this person will run some kind of clear out and try to cross the face of this dude and get him to go that way with him. And obviously his his guy's going to chase him. So the tight end has, you know, room to work. Well, with him staying there, now even though we get this ball off, this cat got outside leverage, and then this cat can just pursue it. Because this dude didn't, I, I'm sure he, he was supposed to run a, some kind of crossing route across that field so the tight end can have all his room to himself. I'm sure he was. But I believe he's the one that Harbaugh keeps talking about messing up. But then if you take him out, you're looking at putting Proche or Dube or somebody else that we probably trust less in the game. Just to add to my point, watch D-Rob after this is over. Like, he know he messed up. Watch. Watch his body language. I ran the wrong route. Come on, bro. And I'm going to defend Snoop a little bit on this play. I know during the game, watching it live, I probably won, was one of a million people to say throw the ball away. But I think this was an RPO or just a read option play, and he couldn't throw it away because he had linemen down the field. Because I don't know if you know, you get two yards maybe. So they the furthest the lineman can go is probably the 31. So you got... You, Look at Ronnie right there already. Look at you up. Oh, you got two more guys right there already. So he, he can't he can't throw this ball away because of you know it's supposed. I think it was a run, and um, Cleveland just played it perfectly. So you know in his defense, he couldn't throw this away. It would have been a penalty. It would have been loss of down and yardage. I think that's what the penalty is for an eligible down for you. But he couldn't throw it away. Hey, we keep talking about how D Jack is is old and washed up, but every now and then he show you a flash of how good of a route run he is. Now he don't get this ball, but just watch what he what he does to Emerson, the young the rookie. If this was a different concept with you know a deeper route protection or something like that, probably got a home run ball. Set him up with he squared him up first to get the leverage he wants. 
Emerson jumps outside. He goes inside. Still a clean release up top. Clean release. Emerson ain't touched him yet. Now he's acting like he's running the dig. So Emerson about to break hard on it. And he turns it up field. Had, had this been something different, you got a, you got a shot right there. I'm not saying the play call is bad or whatever. It's incomplete, but I'm just pointing out DJ. He still has a little bit left in it. He's probably the best route runner we got. He just he can't do it every play. So, again, kind of, you know, looking at when Huntley's ready to throw, are there people ready to receive? Okay, Huntley's ready to throw now. Mark's open. I mean, you could throw it to Mark right now. Even though, you know, he's kind of, they run a little scat concept and Delp is the read. If Delpit widens out to that, he's going to nestle right in right there, and that's where the ball is going. But if Delpit kind of sits up beside him, he'll throw the ball to Mark. So I understand the concept. It's one of my favorite concepts, normally with three guys instead of two, though. But again, he's ready to throw. They're really not ready to receive. So as quick as he's ready to throw, even in a quick game, the routes are still taking too long, so to speak. Like they're 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 – Snoop is set up, ready to get rid of it, ready to get the ball out. The only route that's ready when he's ready is Mark right now. And maybe he should have just went on the mark and let Mark see what he can get. That's probably what he should have did because that's the only person ready to receive the ball. So another thing, we can't we can't put it all on Snoop. You got fade out at the bottom, which is that and that. Then you got fade stop at the top. Fade. Stop. Now. Watch the route by DJ. And I just gave him praise for the little route a minute ago. But it's tough to throw a fade route into a window that's almost closed. So, again, he's ready to throw now. Really? Um, if you're ready to throw now, Mark's your guy. Mark's ready to receive. You may have to hit him on this, this outside shoulder because you got a defender inside. But he's ready to receive. Lead him this way, especially with Emerson's back turn. But that ain't what he want. He want to go up top. And look at DJ. Look where DJ started. He started at the top of the number. Watch out for outside. He get pushed close to the sideline. Now he's still still trailing to the sideline. At some point, you got to get on top of that dude and stack him. Then give your quarterback all this room to throw. You can't just run up the sideline with that, that smidge of the room to throw the ball in. No room for error. And so, yeah, he catch it. But you didn't give him much room to throw the, put the ball in. Because you ran the laser fade. You got to get on top of this dude. Get back on your line. And give your court, let your quarterback fade you out here. Don't just run to the sideline and expect a great throw from a backup quarterback. That's dumb. Okay. And I didn't even think about this part. Look at Snoop's mechanics. Pump fake, throw off the back foot. That don't help shit either. Don't help it at all. Now this was a great throw. But your all pro tight end got to help you out. Run the, I think it's sale. I mean, I think it's flood, but it may be some version of sale that they're running. But Mark got to catch this. Has to catch this. DJ going to run this to try to take the top off. It's going to give Mark room with leverage to get that outbreaking route. Because now he has to try to fight through this route to get to Mark. So Mark's technically wide open. And Snoop makes a great throw from the opposite hash to the other sideline. That's the big boy throw. He put it on him. So Snoop has the arm talent to, to do what we need to do. He just don't t pull the trigger a lot of times. This, this is a great freaking throw from Snoop. Hits Mark in the hands. And then Johnson punches it out of Mark Hands. Got to help your quarterback out, man. Especially when he's struggling. And you are technically the guy on offense. You got to help him out. This stuff right here hurts more mentally than anything. It demoralizes the team for the most, sometimes. But if you, you already in a hole and stuff like this happens, that hole gets deeper mentally. Let's take a look at this play. This play, he, he's at the top of his drop. He's ready to throw. And he got two options. He's ready to throw with two options. Obviously, the seams, you know, 54 is drop, 
dropping back on that seam, taking it. So it's it's covered. It's not an option. But when he take he drops back and covers that seam, that leaves this void here wide open. So now you got two guys ready to receive the ball. You got DJ here. You got Likely here. Likely is probably the easier throw, which is who gets this. And again, I'm cool with this because he's at a point where he's ready to throw. There are multiple options, at least looking at him and ready to receive the ball. Mark's obviously not because he's a clear out guy. But the thing is, had 54 stayed kind of in this whole area, then Mark would probably be the hot person. Because he, if he's 54 stays here, it takes that away. You may you probably still got this slant or this end cut to DJ, but then you got Mark running the scene. But you'd have to fit it in a small window though. So if you follow me on TikTok, you've seen this play already. If you don't, just watch this. Watch these two. Just watch. Come on, man. We tired of this. We extremely tired of this. <laughs> Nuts. Just pausing and pausing it right here, showing you the the lack of separation from anybody. This ball is going to likely, but he's covered. Uh Martin is covering whoever that is. Uh D Rob. Uh Ward's on D Jack. Um Mark's kind of being bracketed by these two guys. No check down on this. Uh, I guess the back is helping block. I think right here. No separation. Just none whatsoever. Now, I, I understand that we like Mark. And Mark's probably our best receiver. But why are we doing double moves with Mark? Who's not the most agile person. 15 yards down the field. Watch this double move. And I applaud his effort. But this is Mark's athleticism versus a DB's athleticism. See, this is kind of the guy he's going to try to do the move on. Run the corner. Bam. Turn it up. Like, why? Do stuff with this guy that he's good at. He shouldn't be out here doing this. He should be somewhere working in here. Working working out here. Why is let somebody else do this? Somebody that actually poses a threat to win on a double move and that can get a get a step there and run away from somebody. Use the guy's right, man. And I don't know what the right way to do it because I'm not with him every day. But just looking at this though, we're not using our guys. We're not putting them in the best possible positions to be successful. Everybody's not not good at the same thing. So individualize, find out what individuals are good at. And start making, start helping them at least show their potential. At least. Now, this throw right here is, to me, inexcusable for an NFL QB. The play is all hitches. So, pre-snap, you kind of look, you scout the field, see where your biggest cushion is that you think you have, and that's probably where you're going. So a pre-snap, he's probably going to likely because of what Newsom is doing. But because uh, somebody else jumps out there, he throws it to DuVernay. Now, this is a hitch. Ward is not so close to DuVernay that he affects the pass. This is a horrible place to ball. Watch. Okay, Duve's open. She likely is open, but he threw it to Duve. Look where this ball lands. Like a two yards short. Like, and he, he, nobody's really on him. He's NFL open for a hitch. He's open for a hitch. Ball lands up here. It actually lands back here, but for Duve to catch it, it was up there. But still, that's this is even worse. Look how far away from where they are up here. Better than Lamar, huh? Now, this play was a good throw. It's the same concept on the play when Mark dropped the ball on the sideline. You're going to get this post by Duve. 
And you're going to get Mark. But what Mark's going to do on this one, he's going to push in some to give himself more room. Then bring that thing back out. And then you're going to get likely. It's going to check on, I think that's Miles. Then work in the flats. So to me, this is flood. Some people call it sell, but you got your low, your medium, and your high, high route right here. How Mark pushes in, give himself more room. Duvernay clears it out. Mark's got all this room to work with. Snoop, Snoop puts it on on that one. That's a good. That's a good throw. All right, so this is the beginning of a two-play sequence, and not necessarily back-to-back, -back, but in the same drive. That kind of pissed me off live. So we're we're in a, a trip set, trips right, and we're gonna run a pick. Play that I call um, twist. Basically, Duvernay's going to come and kind of screen that guy off for DJ to run a slant underneath it. And I saw this live. DJ's wide open on this. Like, it works fine on this play, and, and Huntley misses it. See, watch. Now, he can't go through DJ to get to – I mean, he can't go through Duvernay to get this ball. This ball needs to be out. Like, Huntley's already taken off, and this man is wide freaking open. Throw him the ball. Throw him the ball. He's wide open. So, I said this live. Man, they missed it. Yeah, we got the first down, but still. You want to execute the play the way it was drawn up. Just hold that thought for a minute. All right. The very next play. Snoop's going to be at the top of his route again. Right now, he's ready to throw. Nobody's ready to receive. It's like his mentally, he's in a quick game state, and they are not. The The concepts that are being, are being told to run don't match up with this quick game set up for the QB. There are a ton of times throughout this game, and maybe even earlier games, I would have to go back and look. I'm not sure where. He's set up, and he's ready to throw. These guys are still getting to the depths of whatever their route are. Like, not they're not ready to receive the ball. So, if the line breaks down, all he can do is run it. And so, now, you know, somebody's ready to receive, but he's already starting to move from the platform. Could he have hit Mark over the top? Probably not, because he's already moving in this direction. He'd have to throw across his body. But if, if he stood still and was ready to throw still and wasn't, you know, bailing out there so fast... Yeah, he could throw this ball over here. Not saying Mark would catch it, but at least it gives him a shot. At least. Because these two guys are locked in here. Mark's going right behind him. And who is this D-Rob on a post, maybe? Now, at this point, he can't do that because he's fading that way. And again, it's the receiver's going that way, the quarterback, quarterback going that way. I wouldn't advise him. At this point, I would advise him just to throw the ball away or run it. Which is what he does. He runs it, and I, I don't know if it was a sack or not, but that one he could have thrown away. That was one of the ones he could have thrown away. So after that play, you get a run play by JK, and now puts you at third and 10. You get a bunch set to the bottom. And he's ready to throw, but in this case, the actual line's breaking down on him. Because they're blitzing and they're, you got man coverage, you know, all over the spot. But Huntley does a good job of, you know, extending the play. Great job of extending the play. Watch that open up. Great job of extending the play. Duvernay makes the right read. Huntley makes the right throw. Mm, and you can't really tell, but to me it looks like a drop. Let's look at the end zone view and see if he actually get his hands on that. This, and this just goes, just saying the whole thing is not completely Tyler's fault. He's not very good, but the schemes and the guys out there with him aren't very good either. And I'm talking about the, the skill guys. So, again, this is one of the few times the line breaks down early, but because they, they blitz. They brought, how many they bring? One, two, three, four, five. They brought six. Brought six. And you see all the crossing routes. So, you know, this is a good call versus man. With 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 the mesh and stuff with the crossers, but you see Duvernay starting to open up. 
You got to have that. That's both hands on the ball. That's, that, that's both hands on the ball. Now, it looked like two flags all on the ground, which, you know, it probably wouldn't have counted anyway, but what if those flags weren't out there? You had to make them catches. This is inexcusable for an NFL guy. You got to make that. Got to make the most of your, of your opportunities on this team because who knows when you'll get another one. And this is the last one I'll show you. And this is right after the DuVernay drop. Well, it was penalties anyway, so it's still it's back to 3rd and 10. It was penalties on both teams. Um. So, remember this formation I told you to hold, hold your thoughts? Same formation. Mark's on the ball. The other two guys are off. Just three, maybe four plays ago, they lined up like this and tried the same play. This is the play where I said, dog, they missed it. Now, me saying that didn't mean turn around and right, run it again, same formation, three plays later. Now, he recognizes it now. He's going to avoid DuVernay. But I will say this. He has to run to that upfield shoulder. No matter where he is, he has to adjust his route to not let him undercut um, DJ. So this is part Huntley. This is part Roman. This is part DuVernay. DuVernay has to go at that upfield shoulder right there and make him either go underneath him or over top of him. But he got to protect his slant. And he does neither. It's like he don't know what he's doing. Like he just run around because they know the ball not coming to him. And you see a lot of that with, the, like, with DJ. I mean, not with DJ, with D Rob. He just he'll he'll do a release and just kind of hover, like he don't know what he's doing. But in this case, they had just ran it. Uh, I think this is Ward realizes it, gets to the ins- He's already in the inside waiting on it. He he just waiting on it. He already jumped inside of um, uh, Deshaun Jackson. He's just waiting on the ball now, basically beating him to the spot and daring him to throw it. And I don't think Huntley I've even saw him. But again, this just wraps up the whole ineptitude of our passing game. Like, if if we had 30 passes, I know I saw two man scat at least half of those times. And granted, it, you it can have you can have a high percentage, you know, running two man scat, but you're only gonna get four or five yards a pop. At some point you gotta get a ball down the field to get them safeties out of the box. So, you know, there are other issues with this game. There are more passing in this game, but just getting to the point of that, which kind of pissed me off live, made it even. And in that fumble right there, that's it's crazy. It's crazy. But that 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 sequence kind of kind of pissed me off live to run the play and miss it, then come back to it and don't execute it properly. So it's it's three parts to that interception. It's it's Roman for you know coming back to that that fast. And I'm gonna say it's mostly Duvernay for not doing his job, and then Huntley for not recognizing that you know I need to at least see that Brown and I can go somewhere else or run it or throw it away or do something. But he just threw it anyway. So as you see, J.K. breaking off a nice long run. But this is my two cents about the passing game, man. It's it's bad. And, it, and it's not just it's not just Snoop, it's not just Roman, it, it's not just the receivers, it's all of them collectively, and it's bad. The line is doing a better job of protecting. It does help to have a mobile number one QB and a mobile number two QB because they can kind of get you out of some situations. But the concepts, the execution, the timing, the situational play calling as far as passes, is all bad, man, and it has to get better ASAP. Or we're definitely looking at a one and done in the playoffs. So um, we're going to get up out of here. If this is your first time here and you like what you saw, please like the video. Uh, if you're not a subscriber, please do so. Uh, being a subscriber and liking the video helps us in the algorithm. And that's the help we need. If you want to become a member, uh, the link is there to do that. In the more info section, if you want to be a Patreon, that link's there too. Uh, if you want to buy merch, that link's there too. The store's up and running again. So I appreciate everybody for hanging out with me for a few minutes. You could have been anywhere in the world, but you chose to be here with me. Peace. Make sure you subscribe to more Sip the Tally also. 
more sip the tally it should be on the screen right about now 